Hello again. Welcome to another episode of Leading from Alignment with our good friend, John Opaluski. Episode 205, John. 205. Yeah, it, that's a big number, isn't it? That's a big number. Man, it, it sounds like like a, what I want to get to in my diet plan. Down to 205, you know, something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. So we, we've just come out of a good run, you know, um, listening to the top five uh, yeah. episodes and and really getting it kind of gave you I think some time is what I perceived to, to really focus in on what does Converge do what's God put on your heart what do the leaders need that you serve and today is going to be I think one of those one of those moments where people said we just talked about this and now John and Jim are talking about it so why don't you introduce the topic for episode 205 sure uh today uh 205 is uh, mm-hmm. entitled leadership and communi- and effective communication mm-hmm. um uh, and, and next uh, week, we're going to do leadership and seismos moments. And uh, seismos. seismos is the Greek word that where we get uh, earthquake from. Yeah. And uh, so we'll be talking <laughs> about that next week. And who knows? We might do a, a, a couple more leadership and insert yeah. the blank uh, pods this month. Uh, but really excited to record. Um, today's Today's episode, Jim you know, is about a subject that I think uh, troubles almost every organization in some yes. way, shape, or form. Yes. Um, big churches, small churches, medium-sized churches, big corporations, small corporations, yeah. medium-sized corporations, uh, effective communication. It It is super important. It's a great uh, skill that needs to be developed, but it is, it's hard. Yeah. Um, I've had experience in both worlds and no matter the size of the organization I worked for in my life, whether it was a church or a ministry or a business, uh, communication was always one of the hardest things to do well. Yeah. And it's funny, wonder, you know, why do you suppose that is? I don't know if you agree with yeah. that, but I do. do I, I was saying I, I've had people that over communicate there. It's almost like they're trying to sell me something and I, I already agreed to it. And other people that think I can read their minds, like yeah. they, you know, they say we're going to do this, and that was supposed to be like pages of information, and it wasn't. It's we're going to go on a trip, and you're coming with me. You know where, when, what? So I, I think, I think you're right. I think identifying the mistakes in communication is vital, um, so we can we can communicate better with our teams. I was wondering what you thought, Jim, about why, you know, effective communication communication is so challenging you know i'm, I'm curious yeah. <clears throat> what your initial thoughts are on that i i think god makes us all different and mm. i don't feel like the disc assessment d-i-s-c yeah. you know communicating with the d is you know give me the headlines i just want to know the broad strokes uh, communicating with an eye is hey how's it going how's the kids how's the ranch how's the chickens how's the you know and, yeah. and then we can say hey what time's the potluck on thursday communicating with an s they just don't want there to be conflict. So sometimes they'll communicate in a way that doesn't stir the pot, but it isn't necessarily forthright and sincere. And then C's are the ones that drive me crazy. They want brochures and details. They read owner's manuals. They they read every word in contracts. I just click accept because I figure I got a good enough lawyer to get me out of it. But but I so we all need different types of information. And if yeah. you're a D talking to a C, a, a C's communication style is going to frustrate a D. Because their questions feel like they don't believe in what the person is saying and and on and on it goes. So I I, I think it's yeah. because God made us different and and we're much better at expressing our ideas than listening to what we said, how it sounded to the person we spoke yeah. to. So I, I it's I think it's horribly complex. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you've you've kind of captured a lot of a lot of my thoughts around why it's so difficult. <clears throat> I do think that we we tend to believe we're better at it than we are. Yeah. Um, we tend to have an overinflated uh, opinion of how good we are at communication. Um, I, I think you said it earlier, we, we sometimes feel people should be mind readers, you know, like they should yeah. know intuitively what we want or need from them. Uh, and we neither, you know, we either never ex- state what we need or expect or we're vague about it. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes this, I don't know if you, if you've ever happened to you, but sometimes I think if I thought it, then I communicated it. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, thinking, absolutely. obviously thinking about something and communicating it are two very different things. Um, 
Jim, from my perspective, effective communication has a singular goal. Okay. And that is shared understanding. Yeah, good. Yeah. And shared understanding means that the person I'm communicating to understands what I meant when I said what I did. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's it requires me delivering a clear message through a medium such as speech or email or text into the mind of another person. And when that person's understanding matches mine, then we have good communication. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, I think it's impossible. I, I mean, you say this, so, but I, I, <laughs> we're, everybody that's married goes, I agree with that. And yet, after all these decades of marriage, you know, the most common, mm. the most common problem married couples have is misunderstanding. Yeah. So even when we know each other that well, it's it's so easy to misunderstand what was being yeah. said. Yeah, it, it is a it is an art and a science and gymnastics uh, all, all wrapped up in one. In a grind, right? Yes. Because I mean it so getting both parties mm -hmm. on the same page, mm -hmm. shared understanding takes a lot of work yeah. and a, yeah. and a lot of patience. Yeah. And uh so what I'd like to do is talk about four types of communication that might help us grow and get better at this. One of the most right important on. skills a leader will ever develop. Yes. Um, so here, I'll give you the first one, and this one will be easy, and that is no communication. Right. <laughs> That's the first type. So, and 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 if if you're not clear on what that means, it means that this is communication that is unexpressed. Yeah. Um, and and here's the problem that I've observed. In the absence of communication, the people who serve alongside of you are going to fill in the gaps with their yeah. own ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that that is a recipe for turbulence, for yes. uh, sometimes even disaster. Yeah. I, I believe this, Jim, that people can handle almost anything if it's clearly and lovingly communicated. Yeah. What they can handle is a lack of communication. Yes. And in, in the vacuum of communication, the people that you serve, the, the, the leaders on your team, they will make stuff up because they don't know what you're thinking. What do you, what do yeah. you think about that first type of communication? Yeah, yeah, it's, I think it's the most common form of communication. Mm. Because because I, I know what I'm thinking. I see the picture. I feel the anointing. I've got a grace on my life. And I say, we're going to win the city. Well, I know because I, I know the, the the thousands of nuanced ideas that go into that statement. And others think that I'm talking politics. And others think I'm talking business. And others think I'm just trying to rah-rah the troops and I'm never going to do it. And others, others used to go to a church where the guy said that and they burned everybody out. And others yeah. are excited because God's called them to reach the city too. And it's, it's the same singular statement. But it's 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 interpreted in so many different ways because of everybody's mindsets, experiences. So they do they fill in the blank. So you have to say more than than broad brushstroke goals or uh, or God help you if you're doing disciplinary things. You all need right. to stop behaving this way and then not detail the behavior and the correction. And it's it takes a lot more words than that for the, for most yeah. of us to really get what's going on. Agreed. And so, so the second, that, that kind of leads into the second kind of communication uh, yeah. type, and that's confusing uh, communication. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so it's communication that's expressed, but it's vague. And the listener ends up having to guess what was meant. Um, and, <laughs> and I, and I think Jim, I wonder if that type of communication usually boils down to a lack of clarity in the speaker's mind. You know that and yeah. he or she doesn't really know what they mean, and so they resort to. And I'm going to put myself in in that boat. Sometimes I resort to vague language because yeah. I'm not clear. Yes. Yeah. On what I'm. Have you ever done that? Like you. Well, yeah. I I think I think the best example I can think of of unclear, broad brush stroke stuff is like political slogans. And I, mm -hmm. I don't mean to get anybody, so I use from both sides, but make America great again is not a plan. It's a picture. 
right? And build yep. back better. Uh, hope and was it hope and change? I think was Obama's I think so. slogan. I I think these so, are yeah. pictures. And so we sometimes broad row structs help help us to fill in our own blanks with what we think the speaker means so that we're we're excited about it too. But it's not a hope is not a plan. <laughs> yeah. Change should have a plan. Build back better, make America great again. I, I think sometimes we use large slogans, if you will, because we want to motivate people, but we don't have specifics. Or if you got into the specifics, you lose half your audience. If what they really knew you meant was raising taxes, they they wouldn't want to, you know, to be a part of that. But uh, right. so so we use other words to communicate something everybody can cheer at. But yeah, I, I think sometimes it's vague on purpose. Right, and and I don't think I I would guess Jim that our listeners and watchers it's probably not on purpose most of the time. You know, I, I yeah. don't think there's intentionality or any, any devious intention there, but I do think if I could challenge our, our watchers and listeners this morning, can I encourage you to take time to get clear on what you mean before you say it Yeah, and what you want, get yeah. your thoughts out of your head first and sometimes for me, that's putting them down on paper. Yeah. For others, it might be speaking into a recorder. Um, <clears throat> yeah. But figure, because when I don't know what I mean, the people around me um, get confused. Yeah. And, and so the second form of communication, uh, but the first two are really uh, unhealthy and create yes. a lot of problems for us. Here's the third level our third type of communication, and that's implied communication. So we're getting better here, you know, as, yeah. uh, as, as we move through these. Uh, and, and to me, implied communication is communication that's clear to you as the speaker, but you're not expressing it well. Right. And, <laughs> and you know, you may know what you want, but others don't fully know. And um, it frustrates you, right? Because yeah. people don't respond the way you you think they should, um, and and I've thought to myself sometimes, well, why do I have to spell this out? And <laughs> and I and I think the answer to that is because I didn't spell it out. Yeah. And and so you talked earlier about the different personality types and and the t the amount of communication they need, and I think that's that's really a brilliant thought. In terms of who am I speaking to? You know, am I speaking yeah. to a, a D, high D? Am I speaking to an, a, a high C and they need details and, yeah. and all of that? And a high D doesn't necessarily. Yeah. I think that's a really brilliant thought. I think in general, the solution to implied communication is to over communicate. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to think most leaders go the opposite <laughs> direction and under communicate. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we tend to communicate in the style of our personality, right? Yeah. Um, yes. And and so if I want to say for you, if you feels like you're over communicating, most of the time you're probably getting it about right. Yeah. Um and, and so that's the third one. Jim, any thoughts on that third one? But I say I'm smiling because that's one of our rules of thumb is when I get tired of saying it, that means the people are just starting to get it. Yeah. So so repetition consistency, clarity, but we're talking about the church vision or, or changes we're making, et cetera. Yeah. Because you, you've seen it. I have too, John, where everybody, you know, do we want to build a new building or do we want to expand? And everybody says yes. And they vote on it and there's a building plan, but they, they didn't say they wanted to pay for it. They said they wanted a bigger building and they saw the drawings. And so that communicating, not just the vision, but, but the steps of the vision, including paying for it and, you know, yeah. working, having work days and all those things. But sometimes we're motivating people versus we're, we're actually informing them. And there's a difference. Uh, if you're going to execute a yeah. plan, motivation is great, but information is is how things get done. That's right. That's good. Let me give you one more. Yeah. Uh, and this, this is the one we're all after, right? This is the fourth type of communication, and that's clear yeah. communication. Yeah. Again, yeah. where the hearer's understanding matches yours. Um you know, and I think one way we can get to that, Jim, is asking questions. So if I lay something out to you, I think I think a good rule of thumb is for you to ask you, is there anything unclear about what I just said to you? Yeah. 
Yeah. Or here's another question you could ask. What do you understand based on what I just said? Right. Give me, give me right. feedback. <laughs> Let me know. And um, one of the things that I do, uh, I try to do uh, when we are, so for instance, we were um, doing some planning with one of our teammates uh, last week. And uh, after we were all finished, I sent an email and said, here's what we talked about from my perspective. Yeah. Um, please read through <clears throat> this and let me know if I missed something or I, I, I misstated something. And she wrote me back a couple of days later and said, nope, this is exactly what we talked about. And, yeah. and so I think clear communication where the yes. hearer understands what I'm saying requires some sort of follow up, yeah. either in the moment or in a written form, depending on how. See, what we were dealing with, we were planning the next uh, three months of, of content. And so that's a long stretch, lots of details. And I thought we should have it written so that yeah. we're both on the same page. So what do you think about this last one? I think it's brilliant. Uh, I, I think I think the rules of communication uh, n know the person you're talking to. And I, I love that that thought that we we love basically in our love languages and we and we communicate basically in our the way we want to hear things. That's where we say things. Wow, that that's a that's a real problem, though. I, I think that's sort of remember details. What did you just hear me say? You know, it, did, did you understand what I said? Do you understand what I'm requiring of you? Do you understand the direction we're going? Do you understand the commitment you're making? That Those are huge. And I, I, I think sometimes we, the mistake we make is like, I'll, I'll do that. If there's a problem, I'll fix it. Well, there doesn't have to be a problem. And right. fixing a problem requires two or three times the energy, the words, the rebuilding of trust, the rebuilding of momentum. Yep. Do it right the time. first time. Every time, yeah. and and, and you'll, you're saving time, you're saving energy. So I know it feels like, ah, oh, why do I have to do this? Well, because your team that you're leading, the people you're serving, your wife, your husband, your kids need you to communicate until they see what you see. You you have not used enough words, expressions, tones. You're you're not done communicating until they get it. I, something Bruce Wilkinson brought out in a book uh, called "The Seven Laws of the Learner" is that the verb in Greek, evidently, to teach. Is the same verb as to learn. In other words, if, if the student hasn't learned, the teacher hasn't taught. And I think the same thing mm -hmm. is true here, that if the communicator hasn't, hasn't transferred what they know into the, the minds and hearts of the person they're communicating with, don't call yourself a communicator if they don't know what you're talking about. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're a gust of words, but there's they need you to communicate in some way. So mass communication, uh, I, I, this is one of the things that I think is fun. I realize I have D's and I realize that I have C's. People that want broad stroke headlines and people that want all the details. So for the D's, I will highlight the words I think would be most interesting that point the, the you know to the main source of the change, the the, the contract, the whatever. But I've got all the other details in there for the for the, the C's as well. And the yeah. guys, they're going to ask their wife to read it to them. You know, they're going to that sort of thing. Just what'd you get out of that? Because they just want to talk. But yeah. but I, I think remembering that on the spectrum of communication. Some want a lot of words, some want a few words. And so communicating with them and their language is, yeah. is so vital to good leadership. So let me let me give a three rapid fire. Yeah. Rapid fire tips that I think would be helpful uh, in communication. Yeah. And um, and then I just want to wrap it up with a thought and then I'll I'll yeah. let you uh, close this out, Jim. So here's three quick yeah. tips. These are little shortcuts. Uh, to getting better at communicating as a leader. One, always communicate the why as much as you can. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, when people can understand the rationale behind decisions, uh, it really helps. Um, yes. Now, sometimes you got to make a decision, right? And I, and I understand yeah. this, right? And just say, hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm calling it, I'm calling an audible <clears throat> and yes. we'll talk about it later, but I have to make this yes. decision now. Yeah. Um, but generally speaking, uh, try to try to provide a reason why we're going to go down the path we're going to go. Secondly, close the loop, and, and we already talked about this, but I just want to remind it. What do you what do you understand from what I just said? Said that closes the loop. And then thirdly, um, give yourself grace as a leader here. Almost every great communicator started out as a poor one. <laughs> 
And, yeah. and the best way I think to improve in this area is to see, you know, every new day is an opportunity to practice, right? To hone our skills, to get better at it. And I think if we do that over time, Jim, incrementally, little by little, we'll get better. Yeah. And so will our team. And <clears throat> our listeners and watchers might be wondering, well, you know, why does this matter so much? Why, you know, John, you say this is a big deal, Jim. You're it's saying this big is a deal. big deal. Yeah. Why? Because words create culture. Yeah. And one of the most important elements of a healthy culture are the words we use to talk yeah. to each other, uh, to communicate with each other. I don't believe you can have a great culture unless you have great mutually understood communication. Yeah. And without a great culture, the mission and the vision that God has put on your heart for the ministry he's called you to, for the church he's called you to, for the business he's called you to start, without a great culture, I think accomplishing the mission and the vision uh, that God has placed in your heart gets exponentially more difficult to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jim, that's my last wrap up thought. Uh, share share whatever you have on your mind and then just uh, bring us uh, bring us. Yeah, on. I, I guess I come back to to what Converge is and what Converge does and, and the heart behind it to help people in areas just like this one, that 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 offer of a half hour to just free, no obligation, just go to convergecoach.com click on the connect with us tab and and have a conversation. I think I think sometimes having a safe place to to get some input, some feedback or even some coaching. And I there there are some people that don't need any coaching here, but I would say the vast majority of people do need coaching here. They they need someone like people just listen to this and they go, oh, that's good. And their team's not in their head and they'll pass it on to somebody. That's great. But has anything really changed without a consistent effort, without accountability? Without fresh information that that points us in the right direction, so this is not in my life it, usually. Yeah, right. Communication, knowing the right thing to do, is different than the environment of of actually learning and growing and doing it. So, for iron to sharpen iron, there has to be contact, regular friction, regular tension, regular pulling for the sharpening to take place. So, I think what's happened is there's been a little bit of friction in this, but there's no accountability to it. They can if they if they turn this off halfway through and you know, went and watched a, a friend's episode rerun, then there was nothing to hold them accountable to it. But as a leaders, for goodness sake, you got to get this right. You are wasting so much time, frustrating so many resources, upsetting so many people for no good reason, other than you're not an effective communicator when it comes to vision, dream, future, change, budgets, conflict resolution. So please, 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 please put some effort into this. And if Converge can be a part of that, that's what we do. We love to do this. This is great. And as you have just kind of pulled these truths out of decades of experience, John, it, it's just literally waiting for anybody to tap into, as well as many other members of the team. So my, my closing thought is, if, if you think you're a great communicator, talk to your team and find out, number one, if that's true. And mm -hmm. if it's not, you need to put some effort into this because you're, you're running on a treadmill, not running down the road. You're, you're putting all the effort in without making any progress. And this is why. This is one of the key reasons why. So, God bless you, our dear watchers and listeners. May you be a uh, may you be known for communicating the heart of God, the plans of God, the wisdom of God. Well, and if we can help you in any way, it would be our honor to be a part of that journey. So, uh, go get them again. It's Tuesday. You haven't quit. Congratulations. You're still a leader, and uh, that says something about you. That says something about the grace of God on your life. Keep going as you continue to lead from alive.